those couples that you know ultimately they're married in name but they don't even live together like um you see that now I ain't got to give you no examples y'all know <laughs> and then it was just like you know people that live together they not in love they staying together for the the kids well in this case no kids and um they're staying together for um whatever because people, just back then, people didn't get divorced. They just didn't. Y'all was literally stuck together for life. But, like, he's a duke. Like, a, a duke. He has properties. He had a pro he had a whole house in London. So, if she wanted to go be there to be with her family, she could be. And even though that would be... Although, she probably would just stay out in, um... Out wherever he was. Somewhere in the country. Their estate in the country that it took them two days to get to. Um, sprawling estate, the estate of Hastings, wherever this is in this fictional world, and we'll get into that in a second. Um, but of course, you know, she, they figured out that, you know, hey, you know, you need to stop letting, you letting your father take this, uh, something else away from you too, and we don't have to lie to each other, he's like, you know, and you're not gonna treat me the way he treated your mom. Um, just like a brood mare, you weren't gonna treat her like that anyway. I mean, I will get back to it. his daddy is awful. Like I said, Tyler Perry level of bad. You know, it's uh, we'll you okay? We'll come back. You say we'll circle back because it's gonna go into the race section of this. Okay, so they they figured out. And they work out in the very like last few minutes you see her having a child that they are going to be in the same um, tradition of them naming their child with an A. Their children because the tradition of the Bridgertons is that, you know, like I said, they're all in alphabetical order. Which is cute. Lady Whistledown does make fun of it. It is kind of ridiculous, but it is, it's cute to me. Um, so it's like it's gonna be something else with an A. And she has a son, and that's how we close out. But so that's basically the gist of their story. All right, so we're gonna get into some social things. Oh, I also need to talk about another family because they're important, the Featheringtons. The Featheringtons are another aristocratic fa uh, family. I don't wanna spoil it for you guys, but spoiler alert, that the Featheringtons only have three daughters. Um, Lady, I think her name is Portia Featherington and um, Baron Featherington, who has a gambling problem to the point that he ruined his family. And you don't even know that, but that's why he's moving so funny throughout the whole um, series. I mean, he was just gambling, stupid. And he's got to keep up with all these girls. He was, um, you know, mama mama's out here working hard and he is going against her efforts and then wouldn't tell her anything but it's just like you know i got to be embarrassed because i go out to buy the girls a new dress because we got to have new dresses we're going to 17 balls um in a month and um you don't know what's going on and you don't know anything about your money so she had to do snooping even um to even find that. I know some people like they didn't like um Baroness um Featherington. I was like, but you know, she was I was like now she was not a nice person, but she was she had to hold all that together and it was like things just kept getting thrown in her lap. And but she was trying to pivot and find make a um you know a silk purse out of a uh, pig's ear. So she's got three daughters, they don't have any sons. So she's got to make sure they marry well because obviously the oldest, the oldest sons, the oldest daughter's husband will get whatever with that. But she still got to go and she's got to sit up and make sure that all three of her children are okay. Her children are Prudence, um, Pippa, excuse me, Philippa, and but their nickname is Pippa. That's how do I know that? That's Kate Milton's sister's name is Philippus, but the nickname is Pippa. I was like, that's not a British name, but whatever. But yes, most people name 
people it's not their first name it's a nickname i said which that's like the same i'm on people we have dumb nicknames as a society <laughs> but it's just like same amount of letters i'm like how is this a nickname but that's neither here nor there okay um and um penny penny is important penny ashley is miss wilson that's a spoiler alert. I'm going to have to insert for you to skip that part if you don't want to know who Lady Whistledown is. Which you learned at the very last one. So, and also in addition to her own daughters, because of his debt, he has to take in his cousin, Miss Marina Thompson. She, again, this will go back into the race section. I did not care about <laughs> Marina. Marina... So the thing you need to know about Marina, Marina is um, mixed race, it's never explained, that's fine if we're going to do colorblind cast, and I was like, race never been explained, but like I said, this is not color colorblind, so we'll circle back to that. Okay, so, she, um, they had to take her in, and with no explanation, so it's somebody else that she has to worry about to try to get married off, um, and on top of her daughter, so that's four girls that she has to worry, worry about. There's four girls out in society that she has to worry about. And, well, she already had the three. None of them are married. They're all around the same age. And then you threw this at her. Turns out with um, Marina, Marina comes in, is pregnant. So that's the whole thing she has to worry about. She's trying to keep it secret. She has to go into Turbo Town trying to get um, Marina married off so she can pass off her baby as somebody else. I didn't care. And people were like, oh, they're going to make the one black girl, the one mixed race girl, um, and, and she's like the villain. I was like, I don't, I don't care. And she, and what made it so bad, I was, and um, it's like, oh, she was trying, and the only reason you care was like, because she was trying to deceive Colin Bridgerton. I was like, but he was just, he had told her he would have married her if she just would have been correct it is the deceit but eventually she ends up getting um married to the guy wherever her town is one of the crane brothers because her her beau um the her baby daddy was actually at war and he had gotten killed she did not know that so that's what had been why he was had stopped responding so his brother comes in and was like he would step in for his brother and he would take place so she ends up doing that she was like well she don't want to do that and i was like well girl this is, come on we're also we're also in the regency period that goes back to the women not having anything to do so you're gonna be an unwed mother you know and lady featherington was trying to be like yo you i know you don't want to marry this old man but this old man needs an heir he ain't gonna ask no questions he's trying to get you together like girl your prospects are terrible you still out here talking about love and she was like that's nice and everything but you know i'm trying to make sure you all right girl because of course her scandal becomes a whole family scandal and that reflects badly on her daughter so you know she's that lady featherington is pissed but it was a mess um, and it still ended messy for them because, you know, Baron Fe Featherington got hemmed up because, again, he was out here making bets and trying to cheat people out of money. So, they got him together and now he done put the house up as part of the bet that he was cheating on and the other people found out that he made like a deal. So... He's like dead and now she's got to deal with that and she still got these three girls that she got to get together and she basically lost the whole season trying to deal with Marina's mess. I just didn't care about it. I was just like, oh, okay, she tried to trip up Colin and I was like, but Colin ain't even important. I mean, like Penelope, known as Penn, um, really liked him, but I was just like, but girl... I didn't like that you was trying to rele relegate her to being like, she's a little sister, kind of. She's, you know, because she's Eloise's best friend as well. Eloise Bridgerton. Um, our, pri our sleuth <laughs> for this series is her friend. But it was just like, well, you wouldn't do that to her. And you wouldn't even look at her like that if she wasn't a little plus size little girl. And it was just like, you know, come on now. That's that's another thing. If we gonna talk about inclusivity, everyone is. Cause let's just get into it. 
This is not colorblind casting. Colorblind casting is a good example of colorblind casting. It's actually another show from Shondaland Productions, which needs justice since y'all everybody love Bridgerton so much. Y'all didn't watch Steel Starcross. They, but ABC. I don't think it should have been on ABC. That's the first thing. Second. ABC sabotaged that show. They put it in a weird time slot. They didn't do it and they um, didn't give it the, the right kind of promotion because Steel Star Cross is basically based on Romeo and Juliet's um, what happens after they die. So Romeo and um, the main characters are Juliet's cousins and um, Benevolio who is Romeo's cousin. He is mentioned, the two the two cousins are not. The two cousins in this, their sister, I don't remember that, Rosalind, um, I don't know, Latasha Lynch <laughs> was the main character and her sister was Ebony Williams. And, um, and they were, you know, they were dark and they were beautiful and like, it didn't make no sense. That's Juliet. Juliet's mama was like Middle Eastern and white. And then like her cousins were these two beautiful chocolate black girls. And and then, but like they weren't, it, they didn't try to explain away that, um, you know, why is, you know, Juliet's mama, <laughs> Juliet's mom is white middle eastern and white but she got these full black cousins and the full black and they had like a full black daddy and mama but he they were not like half brothers <laughs> that's 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 colorblind casting and the same thing with romeo's family romeo's family didn't make no sense either because romeo was black you see them for a half a second in the very first episode and he was black juliet was white okay but his parents didn't make no sense either. His parents were straight up white, and it was just like all the cousins, because all the cousins was into it. The the main prince of um Verona, the Duke of Verona, he was black. His sister was Middle East. It was just it was just a hodgepodge. It didn't make no sense. When nobody, no half siblings or anything. They were just like yes. <laughs> I mean like visibly so. It wasn't like, you know how people can be racially ambiguous kind of thing. It wasn't like that. It was like, you know how you look like, what is that? Like maybe, you know, cause genetics are funny. We gonna put it together. It wasn't like any of that. It was just straight up. Just straight up. The Duke of Verona was this chocolatey man and he had this Middle Eastern sister. They, you know, but that's how all the family, I said, now that's colorblind casting. Another example, you know, the original, nah, this is not the original, the Cinderella version where Brandy is Cinderella, the Cinderella version that we acknowledge and love, produced by the late great Whitney Houston, and she also played the fairy godmother. How we never saw, <laughs> you know, Brandy's dad, who was supposed to be, you know, Cinderella's dad, never saw him, but because but Cinderella's black. Um her stepsister was black and and a, and a white girl and Bernadette Peters was her stepmom. No explanation. Then we got to the king and queen was was Victor Garber and um Whoopi Goldberg and their son was a Filipino. It's like, like I was like, now that is colorblind captain. Didn't make no sense. And we were operating from the lens that nobody we ain't talking about nobody being mixed. We ain't talking about how we are just at the assumption that yes, these are their children. <laughs> this is their parents. And if we were cool, I was like, that's colorblind casting. This was not colorblind casting. This is a white story with a sprinkle of color. Um, and to the point, and that's to, to reel y'all in. I have questions because I, this is why I also said that people were like, well, race needs to be brought up and this is realist. I said, this is fictitious. That's the first thing. Secondly, secondly, um, it is not being, not gonna be on my notice that all of the black people um, that are of note are mixed race. Um, or at least light skin. Um, I know for a fact they're um, Reggae, who plays Simon, the fine Duke of Hastings is biracial. Same thing with um, the girl that plays Marina. 
Now there are nice, you know, chocolatey people in the background. I mean, but um, this is not colorblind. Not where everybody of no the um the queen, um, who's playing Queen Charlotte is light skin. No, everyone is pa um you know passing. I don't know. Not the paper bag test. I was like, but you know, they in the they right there. They in the same range. Um. And the only other person that is darker, the only two people that is darker, darker, um, is Lady um, Dansbury, who is like a maternal figure um, to Simon, and then his basically his um, his friend that's a boxer who's who instructs him. He's dark, will also handsome, but you know his wife is you know light skin lucy curls all of this and like you see random that like they found plenty of dark skin people to be servants they saw, saw plenty of dark skin people to be people in the background um so it's like even people that did not have back, um big parts but they were some sort of romantic interest so i will say that that's not color wine to me. So it's like you gave it's a white story with a dash of color. And somebody like, well, Simon was probably white in the book. I'm like, that is kind of beside the point. That's not what I'm saying. And um negative traits, like I was going back, like I keep um harping on his dad being horrible. Now his it's just like Simon's father, when they do a flashback, and then of course he is he is dark skinned and he is look worse, which <laughs> is a trope like in that's a trope in like Tyler Perry movies it was just like you know if you live right and love Jesus you will eventually get your nice Christian light-skinned man you know that's a very a trope in Tyler Perry because like but like when they show the dark-skinned dudes whether it is conscious or unconscious they are the worst check out why did I get married <laughs> the Diary of an Angry Black Woman. Those are the two that pop to mind. Daddy's little girls. Meet the Browns. Terrible. <laughs> and then they get like the like is you and it's usually somebody's dad, somebody's husband, who is hot garbage the way the senior Duke of Hastings Simon's father is, who happens to be dark skinned. So things like that don't I don't miss me. I don't think it's a stretch and so there is plenty of room for improvement, but we're not gonna sit and act like that makes it colorblind because we got a dash of color. This is very much a white story. But I feel like um Shonda's projects do that a lot or even when there's a you know I keep thinking about Scandal. Scandal was supposed to be this thing where we where we focused on Olivia Pope. And it became about all the other white people in her life. I don't care about Millie. And I don't care about Fitz. I stopped. That's why they got, got on my nerves. That's why I stopped watching. <laughs> Things like that. So it feels like they lulled some people in with that like ooh inclusivity and they do the same thing on Grey's Anatomy or that everything has to be a um uh interracial story but even with that it's only if you look a certain way so that's what I see and the reason I don't think that this has been brought should be brought up because it came up if you're going to address it address it so you know, Lady Dansbury, they, it's, race isn't addressed until Lady Dansbury kind of brings it up. It's just like, you know, we were living in two societies. She's alluding to like, um, segregation and slavery is still going on at this point, if you know your dates. And during the Regency period, um, maybe not in Britain. I think so. Britain abolished that slavery before, but still. Britain still has a class thing that is more, um, noticeable than it is right now. Um, We'll get into that when I have my my question section that I have for it since it is never really addressed and it could be addressed in other seat in another season. But um and I'm gonna have to split this up. This is long. Um Yeah, so it is you address it like there's been two societies alluding to um racism but even though no one is racist, no one is in, in this particular thing, it's not brought up because of race. Like even with um, Marina and people had some um, issue with that, 
I was like, my main issue is that there are no um, black romantic leads for the women, and and even if there is anything suggesting romance, because there is, there's a bit of um, I don't even want to be like fetishization because I was like, sometimes y'all be talking about fetish and fetish. Fetishizing, that still is not right. Fetishizing um, on the internet. I was like, but sometimes I'd be confused. I was like, maybe I'm not being, I'm not, I'm too old to be part of the woke and wokes. But I was like, sometimes it just sounds like that. Ain't that just men? Men just kind of are do that to women anyway. I was like, so what? Why is it fetish fetishizing when um, people are of a different race? And I'm like, they're not necessarily, and I'm not talking about anybody that's not, I'm talking about somebody that's not, not necessarily saying something that is um, racial. You know, it's like, oh, I wanna be, you know, um, particularly with, cause we're talking about black and white. Cause even though I saw like one, maybe two random Asian people, that's another thing too. It's not that diverse. But there's an opportunity because like I said, there are eight series and we know coming up, at least from the book that, um, you know, out of them eight kids, they got to get married. The next person to need to get married, or at least will be um, pursuing marriage, will be Anthony. And he is going to look within society. So, like I said, we see um, other high society people of color. Um, I hate that term. But <laughs> in the background. But, um... They don't, they're not important to this particular story. And I know like this can't be all the things and then the, the creator is a white person. So, you know, I'm gonna take it with a grain, a big old grain of salt. So keep that all in mind. And in the book it's written by a white lady too. So here we are. And I have not seen anything from Shonda which would make me think like, oh, this is gonna be like, yeah, you got, um, you know, they'll make some pretty speeches and her stuff about race and being all this. It's like, but ultimately, it ends up being a white story, which is fine. Cause like I said, I like Pride and Prejudice. I like Becoming Jane. I like all that stuff. But you know, let's not act like this was so diverse. This was so revolutionary. And it's just be and for you basically to be like you're putting. Um, brown skin, although light brown skin, on um, what is basically a white um, problem when and try to make it seem like it's being impactful or it's being or that it is being um, revolutionary when it's just like, no, it's just a white story. You just put a black person, you just plop a black person down in there, which I don't mind that sometimes, but when you bring in, when you bring attention to that yes, we are black or we are other in this society, um, then that becomes a whole different thing, if you get what I'm saying. I know that was kind of convoluted, but here we are. So I don't think it should have been brought up because there's nothing to be like, no one ever brings up that, you know, Simon and Mrs. Danbury are black. Then Mrs. Danbury brings it up. Lady Danbury, respect her titles, uh, <laughs> brings it up, and I loved her. She's great, but that uh, again, she's like unmarried, or at least we don't. See, she's an older lady. She took on the maternal role, role, and she's darker. What about the young black girls? There were young black girls, but they were all in the background. So that's that. And the one that you kind of had her story just sucked. Um. Yeah, and it was just like her scheming the whole time. But to the point, I was just like, I don't care, girl. Marry somebody, whatever. And then even when she had a way out, I was just like, take it and, and go. Ride into the, get in the carriage and ride off out of this story. I'm tired. <laughs> That's how I felt about it. I didn't care. Um, And I was like, and which isn't fair, because I liked a lot of the other side stories. I like what Eloise had going on. Anthony was interesting in his own way because he still needed to take responsibility and um, do his job, even though that's not what he wanted to do and it's not fair. He also didn't have a choice, but you know, that's a, that was an interesting side story. I wasn't interested in Marina. Um, 
And I don't, and so, and I wouldn't have been interested if she was a white girl. I wouldn't have been interested if she's darker. So, I mean, maybe if she was darker and y'all try to frame her as a villain, then that would be another conversation because it would be like that that's the problem when you are presenting something as like colorblind, but you don't, um, but you don't address those kind of things because it's just like, okay, so even if you made her darker, but she's the only other black and she's the only black woman who's like a romantic figure but you made her like some ski some scammer basically so what are you trying to say so that's why you had to be careful with things like that um another thing i would be curious about are which people don't know and so we're gonna break it down i'm gonna use a real world example um with this whole with this whole thing my question is because it gets brought back up with um lady danbury she when she brought it up she was like and and even simon's you know the tyler perry daddy duke of hastings he brought up that you know part of the reason he's so hard on simon which is no excuse because he was terrible to that child is that you know we were given this I'm not gonna let you know Hastings fall to the wayside because we were given this directly from the monarchy and this that, and the third. So my question is, are is he are they actually related in this version? Are they related to the king? So people, which I know y'all don't, so we're gonna break it down, don't know specifically particularly us Americans. I was like, y'all don't understand and y'all just say stuff and you sound it sounds dumb, for lack of a better term. So is it an actual title um, that they have because they actually share a relation to the um, royal family or they are so that makes them like dukes are usually also royals as well. The common, um, this example is like, um, you know, the, the Duke of York, that's Fritz Andrew, but he is a child of a monarch. He's just not the oldest. So, just like Prince William, he was given dukedoms, and same thing with Harry, he was given dukedoms on his, um, when he got married. So, but those are like, not an actual, there is an actual York, there is an actual, um, Cornwell, because Prince Charles is like the Duke of Cornwell. But he's also the Prince of Wales, so he doesn't go really go by the dukedom because it's a higher position to be the Prince of Wales. The Prince of Wales is basically the heir, so that. So like eventually Prince William would be the Prince of Wales, however this goes. So that's just that. But when we, I'm asking if it is an honorific, like when you talk about Kate Middleton. Kate Middleton is not a princess. Kate Middleton um, this is the best example. I did not use Meghan Markle because I don't know what they're doing over there. If you stepped away, you stepped away. And this doesn't have anything to do with race, even though that's what y'all try to make it into be. But, okay, so, and because Katie's eventually going to be the, um, queen consort, because she would eventually, because William is, if everything is still on, track with however this goes we're going from a place that in the future the monarchy still exists um yeah so we're just going linear in how history has gone okay so she is not a princess she is not a duchess. she is referred to as the um duchess of cambridge or they're referred to as the cambridges because he is the duke of cambridge she is still referred to by her first name, Kate Middleton, because one, legally that's your name. You don't have to change your name when you get married. Two, she is not a blood um, princess because she was not born princess, so she's not going to be a princess. There is no, it's, I mean, it's not, you are not wrong for real when people be like, well, that's Princess Kate and that's Princess Megan. It's like, well, no, neither one of them are princesses because they were not born royals and 
Prince William is not the Prince of Wales as of yet. He's not the Prince of Wales as of yet because his father is currently the Prince of Wales because the Queen is still very much alive. Um, yes, but you know how life goes. We live, we die, things change. So, you know, people like, and people were taking it like it's an insult. I was like, well, no, it's just not, it's factually just incorrect. But for, with, with Kate and Megan, they are honorifics. They were not born into this position. So it's the same way. So even if they are, a if she's a princess, like she, if they referred to her as a princess, it would, they would be like, that's, that's Princess William. Because it's like saying, like if I got married to, um, say if I got married to um, Reggae John Page, you would, you, your name does not become, because this is topical, he's a Duke of Hastings in this. My name does not then become Reggae John Page, but even though they would be like, that's Mrs. Reggae John Page, um, that doesn't change my name, I'm still Nessie. Same thing. So it's an honorific. That's what I'm saying. So I'm curious to, that if these dukedoms in this show, this is how we're coming full circle <laughs> to do all that. If they are real, if they are bare relation in this world, because also that would make it more colorblind-ish. That, um, well, you know, he's the Duke of Hastings because the king and, and the Duke of Hastings are brothers. It's, that's That's exactly how it goes, you know? <laughs> it was just like, you know, all the queen's children, which most of them are are boys, three of them are boys, um, are dukes. But that is that's how, because they share blood relation. And but after them, and then they basically have the choice um, if they're going to give their ch if they wanted to have their children. The only person that really didn't have a choice in that is Prince Charles, is because well, because he is the um heir so i would assume that would kind of be the same thing along this world as well so that's my thing so are these titles um honorifics or are they like fact actual titles like it's an honorific for um it's really an honorific for um megan markle but it's one for kate too but she's still the duchess of um she's the duchess of cambridge so they refer to her as such, but people still, somebody would get like mad because somebody called her that. I was like, I don't think there's anything else to call her. You're not less married because if you could, because there's plenty of people that keep keep their um, maiden name. I think people just don't know what to call her at this point. So I was like, because it's not, she's not Princess Kate. It's like Charlotte is a princess, her daughter, because she's literally born as a princess, it's not like you can get made into it. And like, even with um, Princess Diana, Princess Diana, because again, you like to forget, you know, Diana and Charles were cousins. Were cousins. Um, but she was an aristocrat and was titled already, and he's the Prince of Wales, so it does not work that way. So even before either one of them got married, you know, William used to be, you know, William Wales. The way that, um, William's children now are um, the Cambridges. This is not their last name, and you see it again in Bridgerton world because they call him, you know, Hastings. But his last, but Simon's last name is Bassett. <laughs> you know, he's the Duke of Hastings, but their last name is Bassett. So that's interesting. Their family name is like Win Windsor, the House of Windsor, and. Mount Baden, so it's like hyphenated for people that are not, um, don't have the, or that are not working royals. So yeah. That was just, that's like just one of my questions, so how does that work? But like, if they made it like, that's how he's a duke, that would be, that's kind of more interesting to me than to just be like, we're just gonna plop these random black people in here and we're not gonna, we're gonna address it, but we're not gonna address it. So that's my first question. Um, yeah, and just teaching y'all a little something about honorifics today. I feel about this series overall. It's a great series. I enjoyed it for what it was. It was a good time. I would give this like four out of five. I love the series. I will be tuning in to next season. It is a good time. Um, I would give it, like I said, I would give it like a four out of five. It's not without its issues. It has some pacing things and like, it's just a good time. It's not 
that serious. But you know, y'all, but also, this is not, I would love to see more things with black people just in, existing, which I did, that's a good point that I did see brought up by um, Reggae John Page, who plays Simon, um, Hastings Bassett, whatever you wanna call him. Um, that he was like, it's important for, to just see black people, and pe you know, black, name a black person because he presents, you know he's biracial, he presents as black, he's been cast as black. Um, that it's important to just see black people existing doing normal things. It's like, so that it's also nice, this is a good kind of escapism. I'm glad, cause anytime, you know, anytime they wanna do a black story about anything, it's about some struggle, trauma, anything. There's trauma, but not, it's not racial. So there's like a personal one with his son, like, and there's all, and, and two, even though I talk about his daddy being Tyler Perry bad, there's always somebody like that in a Jane Austen sort of Regency or the Bronte sort of person. There's, you know, you got Miss, you got your Wickhams, who was terrible. You got people's dad, Mr. Rochester's not great, you know, from other pieces of literature. And they are just white as the day is long. And that's fine. It's just, you know, I just noticed, like, you can fix some things. And that's one of the things you can fix. Um, like I said, though, there is opportunity. So I just hope that when they cast, you know, for the upcoming seasons because they, they will be different stories every time. I think we are basically done with Simon and Daphne. Um, and it was an interesting, kind, um, interesting discussion or at least brought up about the women at the time. Like, women didn't know anything about their bodies. They didn't know anything about... Um, and how ill-prepared Daphne was really to even become a wife. But there were just certain things you didn't talk about. It's not like now we're not in the inf we're a child. We can talk about the information age, the pros and the cons. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, these the fumes. Alcohol, but like vanilla alcohol. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> so that's the thing. That's what breaks it up, and that's what makes your brushes are gonna smell good. But like, oh, we're in a closed space. All right, not really. I got the fan on at least. You can probably hear it. So it is that is important. But like I was saying, yeah, black people exist. And I just want you to see more black people. I want to see, you know, people darker than paper bags. That's all I'm saying. It's a thing. So I'm not just saying it to me saying it, but I, you know, I'm just saying. It. So <laughs> and um. Yeah, the costuming is great. Like I said, some pacing things, but it's just a fun time. We and we do, we need more stories just about people existing, having a life. But I, I actually thought it would be better if the racial component was left out of it because it's just not that kind of show and that's okay. I love that it's not that kind of show. I just need a good time. I like gossip. I like um, poofy foo foo dresses. You know, I like rain. I don't care. And there's some people who obviously had a problem with um, y'all. So anytime you have anybody black on anything, there's always gonna be somebody that has an issue, and then be like, "Well, you know, historical accuracy. Child, is not historically accurate, and you knew that coming into it. Just say you didn't want to see him, and then see people all up lusting after him." Just be, you know, be upfront and just say that. And you also don't have to watch it. Ain't none of us got to watch it. But you know, we did. We in, we still halfway quarantined, so here we are. Um, <laughs> you know, but you know, of course, don't nobody care about this being historically accurate. And I, don't, I was just like, we just roughly know when it's said. Like, I also bring up Rain. Rain, I liked Rain about Mary, it's a show about Mary Queen, Queen of Scots, but it was the CW's version of it. But them girls, first of all, Queen, the Mary Queen of Scots was not a brunette, she was a redhead like her cousin Elizabeth. Young girl, yes. Has she been through all that? The, the gist of the story is, is correct. But like, 
They also had some modern music, but like being played by quartets and things like that, which was fun. We do hear Thank You Next within this. I don't mind that because they adapted the style. Like, um, I'll talk about another show to where, it, where it's distracting, but because they adapted the style to this, I normally don't like modern music and these sort of things, but it doesn't bother me the same way it didn't bother me with Rain because they adapted to the style of the times. It was kind of, you know, court, string quartets, operas, and things like that, which, you know, that's, it was also, it was a good time. Just a good old, good old time. And, um, but like with Rain, I didn't care about that being um, historically accurate. I mean, it gave me the gist of you had real, um, it was dramatic and all that kind of stuff and it didn't feel like foo-foo dramatic because she really was like running for her life. She really, <laughs> she really was trying to keep her kingdom. But like, I'm not, that's the gist of the story and it's, you know, it's kind of messed up what happens with Mary, the Queen of Scots. Um, but like, I'm not going to, hop on and act like it was terrible when just because they was basically wearing prom dresses in some of the scenes i was like but honestly you know that might be a budget thing i thought like, i didn't mind it it was fine it wasn't very distracting it was not like every day so they still like they gave you the spirit of it it was fine so people were trying to be like well you can see that in the costume and that it's not right i'm like y'all come on <laughs> and some things when you see the historically accurate version which most um most most um costume is not completely historically accurate because some of that stuff looks horrible and it just does and it's accurate ish you're in the same thing but it's just like you have different underwear you have different shoes some of the shoes were just you know, not in this particular thing, but I'm just talking about people bringing that up to like, I, I don't want to nitpick. I would, I'm here for the pretty over anything. I like, you know, a good treat for the eye, which, the, which Bridgerton was. It is worth you watching, especially if you like Regency things. Um, I've been talking about this way too long. I'm definitely breaking this up because I've been talking for over an hour. Um... But yeah, um, and we can also discuss what would y'all like to see going forward. I hope y'all have been having a good new year. It's been weird already. Um, yeah, I wanted to record this actually around um, Christmas when it dropped, but I couldn't because I had a suicide bomber in my city. So here we are, and, and I did not have any service. I thought I had the internet. I was like, I did have the internet at least. So I could do things on Wi-Fi. And um But yeah, it was very um I was conserving my um technology. My phone, my camera, my things for emergencies, because I didn't know what was happening. It was very random. Um Christmas morning, downtown and knocked out all the phones, um, including the emergency services so no but I was safe my family was safe um, friends were safe um, yeah but that was wild so that is but this is dropped around Christmas that's when I was doing it now I have been working every day since then even now I'm doing this at night just in the middle of the night to just talk about it and get it out. I miss talking to you guys. All right, so what should be the next thing I talk about? Um, I can talk about some books I've been reading. Um, I will definitely be doing the Lovecraft um, Country because um, I wanted to actually, why I hadn't put that out and has been off for a couple of months now is because I wanted to read the book and compare and contrast. So that will actually probably be my next one. I should have my, um, maybe I'll do some makeup on that one. Yeah, I'm not, I haven't been that interested in what's been coming out, but I, there's some things that I bought even for like Black Friday that I haven't used yet. Um, so yeah, so we can talk about that and just things I've been doing. All right, so I've been talking way too long. Y'all have a good blessed day and remember that Nessie loves you, bye.